think that it's yeah okay to start. So okay, so today we're gonna try to cover the chapter chapter fifteen, you know. So actually, chapter fifteen is uh, quite quite difficult because personally, it is it is quite it is very hard for me to understand because it's really about the last model in here. But the thing is, this one is uh, quite hard to understand in my in, in case of me. So I hope that I can explain clearly for this. So today we're gonna, as you can see here, today we're gonna try to cover the estimation of the distributed rep model, and also het heteroskedastery and autocorrelation consistent standard error, which is the H A H S A A C error gonna be gonna be discussed because this one is very important because whenever we have a time series analysis we actually have a kind of a uh, correlation gonna be happen between the between the observation of, over the time so that might be the test clearly tested about the those kind of uh, autocorrelations and then autocorrelation consistent uh, thing. And then also if we're gonna discuss about the generalized least um uh, square model. So let's start. Okay, so these are the as you can see, these are the all of the our uh uh our packages we're gonna use. So so in here, we're gonna try to deal with the example of the orange juice data. So, uh, orange juice data is a kind of a Florida kind, uh, in a US Florida kind of data set about the how just kind of observe the, observe the number of frozen days, like a number of the days which has a very low temperature. And then and then also about the about the changes in the concentration of the orange juices, like uh, depending on the how cool it is, how what's the difference between what's the difference in the concentration of the orange juices, depending on the those kind of frozen days, number of frozen days for each month. So that is actually try to kind of a relationship between the price changes to the weather condition, right? So, so how can we estimate those things? So that means we have a kind of a set of the time period, kind of a data set. And then uh, we each, each month, we actually collecting the, uh, collecting the data set about the one is for the concentration. Uh, no, no, one is the price change of the orange juices. And then the other one is the number of days uh, has the cool frozen date. And then depending on those things, how those prices gonna be changing. That's our question in here. So as you can see here, we can actually load in the, this one. And then when we plot in this, we will find like this. So depending on the our time period, which is the T here, and then our price index gonna be punctuated over time depending on the number of uh, uh number of frozen days which is it is not uh clearly mentioned in here but yeah that actually what we wanted to ask uh, address the question question we had to address about so in here in you can see about the monthly changes of the prices of the frozen concentrated orange juices so like uh, depending on the date, the percentage of the concentration orange juice is the changes. And then when you're looking at the up here, or maybe down here, to the number of freezing degree days, as you can see here, those are the kind of a set of the relationship because whenever it has a, has a kind of a high, high frozen days, as you can see, as you can see up to the top, at right after that, it has a pretty low kind of a concentration rate. So that might be the there is a kind of a little bit time lag, depend about the number of freezing days actually 
effective about the following far possible following the orange juices prices and then the concentration uh, changes. So that's what is called the time lag. So actually lag means, you know, in English, in the lag means is a kind of, uh, when something is happening in this period, those effects gonna be affect, those gonna, those events gonna be affected a little bit after the a little bit time gonna be passed, you know? That's the kind of a, what is called the lag. So that means that there is actually time interval that we can see about the outcome or some of the uh, uh, consequences of the dead effect. So that's what is called the lag. So it definitely has the kind of, that kind of things gonna be happen when we try to looking at the time series data analysis. That's the what, what this one actually have about. And then uh, there is a, in kind of a certain time interval, there is a kind of a kind of a pattern gonna be happen. That means we can say about the there between the those two variable like the y and x is uh, definitely has a kind of a causality gonna be happen. So x really affect x really uh, causes the y. There is a kind of a, a little bit time interval, but the thing is whenever x gonna be changes, y also changes. So that's the what the causal dynamic causal effect is about, and then uh, uh that lag model gonna be addresses to the those causality of the between the those two variables. Okay. So so now we just uh, try to okay based on the these two outcome, let's try to just a simple dynamic regression model, which is like this. In the time is a di and ln means that this one is actually function for the dynamic uh, causal linear regression. So, and then FDD is the frozen days, and then uh, this one is the percentage change of the concentration. So that means we can try to figure out the relationship between the frozen days and then a uh, percent changes in the percentage of the concentration. And then as you can see here, there is a definitely has a relationship between the those two because uh, whenever whenever frozen days has increases there is a definitely has a changes of the percentage of the of the concentration of the those juices right so that means in here additional freezing degree day so one more day in month leads to the price increases the percentage of the point in the in the same month so that means Whenever whenever frozen day has increases, price is gonna be increases. So that one actually causes to the price changes, as you can see in the formula at the bottom based on the this this result. So yeah yeah right. So there is a, actually many policy interventions gonna be yeah gonna be have some lag. Yeah, that's the that's right. Because so whenever we have a kind of a policy that we wanted to address the, some of the questions or some of the problem, that that takes time. Because uh, whenever maybe for example, there is maybe during the COVID nineteen, we actually when the when the peop when the our case or death rate is the increasing in the first in the in the first time period. And then after that, government actually tried to shut down, shut down order, right? And then everything gonna be shut down. And then after that, and then and also stay home kind of order, right? After that, after that, it it. But the thing is, even if the the policy is the enacted, there is a still kind of a little bit trend over time happen. After that. After this time interval, it's gonna be gradually changes like a, a little bit decreasing trend. So that means so many policy interventions. So you, as you can say, so most of the policy intervention actually takes some lag. So those are the kind of a, yeah, that's right. So so whenever we have a policy analysis, 
And then we have a pretty good time tracking data set before and after the policy intervention that actually allows us to testing the uh, true effect of the that policy intervention before and after uh, after observation data set. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good uh, good catch. So as you can see here, so so, so our next question is gonna be the okay, now we actually have a uh, have found that uh, maybe simple dynamic regression has a kind of a, there it might be the some of the possible relationship between the those two. But the thing is, when we how what is the interval about the those those effects are gonna be validated, you know? That's the, our next question. So that means okay, here is the something happened, and then here is the consequences, but what's the time interval on uh when we uh, until we can see observe the some clearly effect consequences of the these kind of a you know variable or effect. So that means what's the time lag of the this this intervention this intervention or this variable gonna be if uh influences to the our outcome. So in here it actually developing the six legs of the freezing degree date, which means, okay, here is the our, what we think is the degree of the day. But the thing is, when we trace back to the maybe six month time period of the that free, frozen day, and then we can also check about the that kind of a uh, price changes. And then maybe Maybe when we testing about the okay, for example, frozen day about the six month period, six months ago, gonna be significantly affected to the these changes. That means we have a kind of a around the six month kind of a time lag. That means that effect actually has to come from the six month ago, you know. So. That so it is actually kind of a what's the cycle 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 ranges of the that effect gonna be validated. So that's the how this one is about. So by using the this L kind of function, L means this one is actually lag, of course. And then we can testing about the we can actually adding the variable about about the frozen number of frozen date about a month ago. This is the exactly the same month. And then this one is a one month ago, right? And two months ago, et cetera. And then six months ago, we testing the, we testing the total relationship to the price changes. In here, as you can see, there is actually none, none of the, none of the premium, previous time period does not actually of, in, uh, clearly significantly influences to the time price changes only same month frozen day gonna be affected to the price change that's what this one is about but sometimes whenever you have a like a like this kind of a uh happen like this maybe un until the until the three months kind of a data is a highly significant relationship to the this price change that means actually Normally, the time lag of the of the frozen days in the price change is the three months. So that means those kind of a price change is actually highly related with the number of frozen days about the three months ago, and then uh, three months, two months, and one month, and then same month gonna be have uh, related to the those price changes. That's the how we can look at the, this kind of analysis result. So as you can see here, there is a definitely have a kind of a no significant relationship between the between uh, other other time lag month. The only only current only the same month gonna be have a highly correlate highly related effect to the price changes. Okay. All right. So. Is there any questions so far?
No, it's 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 good. It's 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 good. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, now that is actually a very simple kind of a definitions or a simple approaches about the uh, distribute lag model. And then as you can see here in the, this chapter, actually special lag model gonna be used to understand the, our true effect of the of the some of the intervention or some of the changes to the our changes in the outcome. So that in general, in here, like uh, this kind of a causal effect is going to be measured. Some of, uh, assumption of the stationarity, which is the, we already discussed with the, this one in the chapter 14, and then exogenary is going to be must be whole. So that what does this mean here is whenever we have a distributed model like this, because uh, this one is the same month, this one is a month ago, two months ago, and then our, our month ago time period. Whenever we have a, this kind of a conditional mean of the error term for the each time period, and then whenever we have the sum of the this of of the all of the this error, and then our expected value of the this error term gonna be the zero, which means that this one should be the kind of a proof of the what is called the exogenous variable, which means that it's kind of a, we actually assume that, what does that mean that uh, we actually assume that uh, our error term does not have any kind of a, uh, any kind of a relationship across the time period, okay? And then we also have another uh, assumption is the X, X T and Y T gonna be the stationary, so it doesn't. It has a kind of a consistent kind of a values over time, and then it became the independently distributed. It gets large, so that is a kind of a every observation has a kind of a its own kind of a uh, independent kind of observation. It does not have any kind of a effect between the between the time period. And also there is a no perfect collinearity. So that means that there is a no correlation of the uh, between the X and Y or other time period kind of a variable. Okay. So then uh, the next one is a kind of a, okay. So to, to conducting the, this kind of a dynamic causal effect model, there is actually terms we have to understand. So dynamic causal effect is uh, actually called the dynamic multiplier for the this data. So in the previous in the previous uh, formula we actually see that y t equal beta zero plus beta one x t plus beta two x t minus one etc. Right? And then beta uh, maybe r x t minus r etc right so whenever we think about the these values here actually especially for the in the first one like the same one for the that one is actually called the dynamic multiplier and then each beta actually have a multiplier of the each time period of that affects to the this outcome and then and then it passes for the beta one is the kind of a direct in, impact effect. So, cause that is actually means that the X T and Y T is the same time period. So specifically in case of the beta one, we actually call about the this one is the impact uh, effect. So that means that it, we usually say about the this one is the directly related with the changes of the Y outcome. And then whenever we testing the over time period with the lag, that actually kind of a cumulative, cumulative kind of a dynamic multiplier. So we use a unit change in X and Y, okay? It's a kind of a cumulative sum of them. So whenever we have a, this lag time variable added, each beta one actually gonna be the cumulative, uh, cumulative that affects to the y changes. So coefficients gonna be the cumulative 
sum of the uh, multiplier gonna be the keep adding depending on the that time lag kind of period. Okay, that's what this one is about. Okay, and then so as you can see here, whenever we have a cumulative multiplier like a cube sum in here, and then we can see the this one is the keep adding. So it is keep increasing. So this one is actually only beta one. And then uh, one period CD, CBM means the beta one plus beta two. And then a uh, two period is the beta one plus beta two plus beta three. So it keep adding depending on the, the time lag we are gonna be testing. So in the previous example, we actually testing about the uh, our time uh, series data set about the six month until up to the six month ago, right? So that means those kind of a six month ago time time uh, period uh, multiplier like a beta is gonna be the keep added based on the this cumulative to testing about the cumulative multiplier because it is actually keep adding addictive kind of effect to the current changes of the price, right? So that's the how this one is about. Okay. And then whenever we have the testing based on the this kind of a cumulative outcome, it usually say about the okay, those cumulative effect is highly, highly significant in here. Like uh like when we say about the HAC gonna be tested like the heterosexuality and consistent. So that means there is that actually kind of a, our correlation, there is a no kind of oral correlation between the those time periods. When we actually have a oral correlation of the this between time period data set going to be considered, we can say about the each time lag has the kind of a highly significant, which means there is a definitely cumulative, uh, cumulative kind of effect for the between the frozen days in, uh, uh, and the price changes of the orange juices of time, okay? And then what about the HSD standard error? So that is actually says of, uh, in here, because uh, in the previous chapter, we actually assumed that uh, in the time lag model, our error term like uh, E mu at T, Right, and then E, uh, not E, hold on. Uh, XT, XT minus one, and then XT minus R, this should be zero, right? Like a conditional mean of the all of the these time lag variable for the error term of the all of the these time lag variable should be zero, right? But the thing is, most of the time series cases, it does not happen because it is a serially correlated due to the this kind of a determinant why it does not include the regressions. So that means maybe this is the this is the observation of the uh, time period t. That observation actually have a correlated with the t minus one or t minus two, etc. Actually. This kind of a value has a highly correlated with the level of the uh, uh, value of the time t. So it is seriously correlated uh, to each other. So to address the, these kind of things, we actually testing about the, what is called uh, this heteroscedacity and consistent errors. Because uh, this one actually allows us to the uh, solve the, our problem about the correlation problem. Okay. These things like, uh, our inference is going to be the adjusted based on the, this kind of a uh, standard error, adjusting the standard error term. Cause uh, in the previous chapter, the last code in the previous chapter actually based on the, this kind of a, uh, after the adjustment of the standard errors, we can definitely find that uh, there is a, highly, highly cumulative effect of the time uh, between the time lag variable, okay? And then 
there is actually very complicated kind of a variable uh, like a situation in here, like a, this kind of a mathematical formula. To be honest, I cannot understand what this actually means. It is actually seems like it is related to the about the testing the sum of the correlate, sum of the variate variance, variance functions going to be tested through the, this kind of a test. But the thing is, I I try to understand this what exactly this means. But I just conceptually, uh, what I know about the conceptually is the uh, is that the usually most of the time series data set between the observation or the, between the observation data between the time period has a different has a correlation to adjusting the this kind of, to to take this uh correlation into the into the con consideration in our model our hst testing or hst hac i mean the hac standard error gonna be the tested and going to be the adjusted to 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 correctly testing examine the our model that's the what i understand okay what do you mean by that the b1 does not change this beta one does not change this so in primate adding that does not matter the beta one actually means that the in that period it is actually uh pre represents the uh magnitude of the coefficients about the that month has been the affected to the price changes in the orange juice. Okay, it is fixed. Yeah, it is a fixed effect. You know. Okay. So adding the legs does not matter. I don't understand what does that mean what you try to say. What do you mean by my, the... my background is a bit noisy, that's why I'm I'm, I'm texting. Yeah, but, but I was I was just it was from the previous uh, uh -huh. subsection, you know. I noticed that when we act, added the six uh lags, the, uh -huh. the, 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 the 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 point estimate we get for beta one like zero point four seven doesn't change. So I was like uh, I was thinking that as we add more lags that that, that should have changed right to no, no, it's not changed. That's the actually basic assumption of the time lag. Because the conditional mean of the error term does not change, has the zero means. Each coefficient is the independent to the each other. It's the fixed effect. Okay. It is a constant. Okay. Yeah. The nice. only thing is the whenever we have the time lag kind of a variable, like a three month time. Maybe, maybe when we testing about the three month time lag or six month time lag, those things are gonna be added cumulatively, right? But but the coefficients by itself gonna be the fixed in this case. Okay. Even if there is a lot of a time lag, it's still consistent of the that coefficient does not change. Because the dead one is actually the other lag variable is the whole cons cons uh, constant. What's the relationship between the dead time period kind of observation and changes of the percentage of the outcome? So it is a base, it is like a like a regression. It is a it is a regression. But the thing is, the only thing is that we only take care of the time. And then when we take care of the time, that actually ha definitely have a lot of a correlation going to be happen between the observation. That's the we have to consider about the, by using the this HAC standard error, like the hex standard errors, and then we have to adjusting the those standard errors to get the get the magnitude and significance of the that time lag variable. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. That's the thing. So in here, actually, what I really don't like of the, this book is uh, authors always changing about the, their uh, his changes about the data set. In here, he act he actually the author actually simulating the some of the hypothetical kind of a data set, like here. 
because in the previous chapter, we have used about the orange juice data set. <laughs> but now we actually changing about the hypothetical kind of a data. I think that this one is because of the, this actually tells the more, uh, her, his explanation more clearly. But the thing is that this one is actually make us to the heart to understand about the, this kind of a concept sometimes. Uh, but anyway, so this one is a kind of a, actually this code actually represents about the, this kind of a formula as a process. And then, but the thing is that there is actually R function, like a new, new rest kind of test. This one actually allows us to the, get to the, this final value, you know? Like a like a computer adjusting the HSD standard error, so heteroskedacity and consistent standard error. This one gonna be adjust for the gonna be used to the adjusting the standard error for the our testing of the our dynamic cause effect model, as you can see at the bottom as the follows like this. So we actually apply to the this variance and covariance metrics to the this adjusted standard error kind of value. So like a like a diagnosis is the kind of a variance. And then each these elements actually represent of the covariance. And then based on the these kind of a regression metrics gonna be affected. And then after adjustment you will see the this gonna be the changes when you compare to the simple linear regression, okay? Uh, and then um, last one is the, okay, now we actually testing about the strictly exogenous regressions. So that means in the previous chapter, we actually uh, uh, like uh, assumes that uh, when we try to do the time series analysis, our x variable is the kind of a kind of a exogenous kind of a variable like exogenary like a x like independent of the effect of the x on t. But when we actually try to strict kind of exogenary, that means we can actually have a, a kind of a more like a s more like a computing the estimate of the dynamic multiplier by using the this ORNS and then estimate of the this error term, like the sum of the these all of the error term throughout the these uh, throughout the those time lag periods, gonna be the tested to see if there might be the zero values or not. So it is a Conceptually, it is very hard to explain, but the thing is in here, when we looking at the, some of the residual kind of outcomes in here, you can see it is about the testing of the, those kind of a residual actually close to the zero or within the sum of the ranges. That's the, that's the how this one is the chain, uh, it's a tested. So that means that whenever we have the time lag, Okay, those kind of a residual are gonna be the close to the zero. That means that kind of a period does not have any relationship between the current outcome changes. So that means when we have a kind of a strong in the, uh, exogenous kind of a testing, that actually allows us to the, uh, how much we have to set up the time lag like this. Okay, so in these cases, assuming that the, these kind of uh, ranges actually have a kind of a lane, uh, array, uh, ranges about the no kind of a relationship between the this time lag variable to the outcome, this one actually tells us about the maybe one, two, three month time lag has to be considered. That means we have, there definitely have a relationship between the maybe t minus two, like uh, we can say about the yt in this graph, yt is the beta zero plus beta one xt, which is the 
0 month and then beta 2 xt minus 1 plus beta 3 xt minus 2 plus mu t so that means we can only consider about the, our time lag about the two months ago including the current month current month one month ago and two months ago kind of a uh, period kind of observation gonna be thinking uh, gonna be related to the changes of the this outcome variable okay that's the how you can understand about the this kind of a graph and then uh, those are the kind of uh, how we can try to adjusting uh determine the, the time lag and then the same thing for the gls estimation in here too okay because as you can see here in this case T minus one and then L one has the highly significant in this, like the correlation is a pretty low. And then this one, all of the this kind of a meaning that is the based on the what we can see up to the top, like a, this kind of a residual kind of a testing for the strict exogenity uh, of the this dynamic multiply like a beta one and beta two, like a testing the those kind of a standard error standard error from residual and then we can actually determine the, our number of a time that we have to test it yeah it is about the stationary in this case yes correct i think this is it and then the 15.6 is the kind of a exact kind of example of the orange juices and then the cold weather it is actually the same thing. So, but the thing is, it actually testing about the 18 time lag, as you can see here, right? Because that means it is assuming that uh, there might be the, okay, same month, kind of a frozen day. And then we actually testing about the, our, the number of frozen days of the time period data set on up down to the 18 month ago. Right, these are the all of the testing to see the how those each time period variable observations gonna be related to the our price changes over time. Okay, so that means we can say is the y t equal beta zero plus beta one x t, and then beta two x t a minus one until beta 18 xt minus uh, 18 plus mu t this one is how xt and xt minus 1 until xt minus 18 gonna be tested to see the relationship in that part actually i don't understand this one okay because uh, strict exogeneity is a kind of like a more like a cares about the uh, uh, zero condition of mean going to be the more strict to be tested to see if uh, to, to examine the our, our time lag variable going to be the uh, independently distributed to the one another. That's the, what I understand about the strict exogeneity and exogeneity kind of problem but i'm kind of also still confused about the how we can try to define the strict exogeneity and exogeneity things because i read the, this one too over time but the others yeah. did not clearly explain about the this what the difference between the those two terms Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I was thinking the, 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 the main difference would have been the, 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 the time period we considered in the uh, zero conditional mean. Because I'm, I'm thinking in for, for, for just the standard exogeneity, we just uh, consider the, we make the zero conditional mean assumption conditional on the, 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 the regress source of, of interest or the, mm. the control variables of interest. Mm. Whilst uh, in the strict uh, exogenity case, we are saying that uh, the error term uh, has a zero conditional, uh, uh, has a zero mean conditional on the past, present, and future 
uh, and future control variables, which mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, I don't think it's 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 possible. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, that's how I, I'm thinking of it. Yeah, cause, cause I yeah, cause I also try to find about the Google about the exogeneity and strict exogeneity kind of term, but the thing is I still cannot see the what's the difference between the those two. Cause exogeneity actually related with about the testing the, uh, zero condition and mean of the our error term across the time period, that is actually assumption, but. The thing is, in the causal effect kind of a dynamic model, it's going to be the more like a strictly tested to to get to the more like a causality kind of effect. But still, it is quite the same to me. But yeah, but mathematically, it seems like a little bit different. But the thing is, I don't know about the that meaning of the differences. That's the kind of my problem. So, and also that's the reason why this chapter is a freaking uh surprisingly kind of a uh, hard to understand because uh, the author does not clearly explain about the old things in detail in the throughout the chapters she uh the other also kind of uh, seems to be summarized the sum of the chapter and then i don't yeah, yeah. He, he, he fast the book i think it would be a good uh, idea to get to consider some, yeah. some some chapters to read the actual book yes yeah he always refers to the book and doesn't explain yeah. Some of these things in detail. Yeah. Maybe maybe if you are interested about the, those things, maybe you have to you have to look at the, the other kind of a textbook the on, that only contains about the time series regression model. Because the yeah. time series regression model by itself is the kind of a big, big book. Yeah. As as I know. Because <laughs> I all know that in our R for data science the Slack channel, there is also have a study club about the forecasting predictive time series kind of a book study book yeah, yeah. yeah they definitely have some idea about the, this one but right now oh. based on the, this textbook i'm not familiar with the, this kind of term so but anyway so in here is a kind of orange juice example so we can actually see about the, this kind of a dynamic multiplier effect so as you can see after the those all of the those all of the HS HAC standard error and then all these things considered, we finally found that in terms of the dynamic multiplier effect, like a beta one and beta two, and then a beta three, etc. Et and then it actually down to the 18, right? Yeah, here. And then we can actually find that the uh, in case of the dynamic uh, multiplier, the same month of the frozen dates, number of frozen day in the same month, and then a uh, one month ago, those are the actually highly related, highly affect influences to uh, influence on the chain price change in the orange juices over time. Right, and then a cumulative multiplier. When you can see here, that means it is actually cumulative kind of effect until the thirteen month. So that means a year kind of a a year kind of a effect gonna be uh has to be considered to testing about the cumulative kind of effect. So that is actually stacking up from the um uh, uh, about a year ago. Okay. Directly, it is actually affecting to the these two months, but cumulative multiply actually have an ear kind of a effect. Okay, and then it is also the quite the same kind of a pattern for the this uh this cumulative and then this cumulative errors, uh multipliers. I think that number three and number four is the kind of a different time lag or maybe different kind of a setting of the variable, I guess. So, but anyway, most of the cases, as you can see here, dynamic multiplier, which means uh, the magnitude of the, these coefficients is actually affected to the amount of a time lag. And then a cumulative effect actually have a kind of a year 
long kind of a cumulative effect of the or uh, uh, of the uh, in terms of the change in the, the orange juice, orange juices. That's the, what this one is about. Yeah. See, I'm kind of a very hard to understand of the what the differences between the these things, but that's the, what I understand of the these kind of uh, changes. And then, as you can see, the dynamic effect of the FDD is the whole, when at the time that goes by, it is very close to the zero. And then maybe sometimes some negative, but anyway, it actually converging into the zero value. As you can see here, like the converging into the zero, right? And then in the first, the, few months there is actually kind of a effect gonna be happen. That's the how this one actually is about. And then whenever we looking at the cumulative kind of effect in here, we can also find that uh, it is actually cumulative effect is a pretty increases in the first few time lag and then decreasing in the over time. That means there's only kind of a time lag gonna be affected to the sum of the time lag, uh, sum of the time lag period. And also, this one is also kind of a testing about the, have the dynamic multiplier gonna be stable over time. To address the, those kind of testings, the author actually actually updating the, their model based on the, uh, time based on the sum of the specific time period, like the 1950 and 1966 and 1967 to the 83 and after that. And then when we're looking at the here, we can actually find that uh, in terms of the 1950 and 1960, and then the 1967 and the 1980, there's a lot of a punctuated kind of a dynamic effect gonna be changes over time by monthly. But the thing is, Whenever we have a uh, 1984 and 2000, it actually punctuated uh, some time lag, but after that, it keep decreasing and then a close to be zero and then a negative zero. That means uh, between the 1950 and 1983, actually frozen days has a kind of a quite good relationship with the price changes over time, but the thing is, after the 1980-84, it seems like uh, like uh, the those kind of relationship gonna be the stabilized over time. In the in this kind of time span, maybe that might be because of the maybe agricultural technology gonna be advanced that actually allows us to uh less affected by the number of frozen days. In the 1950 and 19 until the 1983, it actually punctuated because the dynamic multiplier actually keep increasing or keep punctuated in the higher level, right? So one point over over the 1.0 or kind of something, right? In that case, that means in this kind of a time period, it seems like uh, due to the lack of the agricultural technology or something, maybe there might be the lot of a uh, relationship between the uh, uh, frozen days and then the price changes because the weather condition definitely affected a lot. But the thing is, in the nineteen eighty four, after the nineteen eighty four, we actually find found that the, there is actually negative kind of a multiplier effect. That means there might be the less significant relationship between the frozen days and and the price change in the orange juices like uh, advanced month of the agricultural technology or maybe more advanced technology for the storing the oranges as a stack. Based on, uh, in the case of the, we have a very high frozen days in the certain month, we can actually sell the that, that stored oranges. So storing technology and agriculture technology is going to be developed, maybe external factors. Our eight, nine, after the 1984, that actually seems like uh, 
dynamic cumulative multiplier gonna be the stabilized over time. Because it is the kind of a gap decreasing trend of the time time lag. That means price change does not have a quite good relationship between the frozen days and the price changes. That's the how this one is about. So it is a quite good implication. So I think this is it because uh, this one is actually kind of a end of the causal effect of the of the model when we have the time series analysis. But but personally, I personally I, I have to say that 